Hi guys, welcome to another Living SA TV video, David here. Today we're going to see the most amazing story behind South Africa's biggest fast food chain, aka Chicken Lincoln. Don't you believe me? Stay tuned because once again this video will blow your mind. George Sambonos, the creator of Chicken Lincoln was the son of a poor Greek tea room owner. Little George aspired to be famous one day, and as he grew older, he told people he wanted to operate a fast food franchise, and everyone made fun of him. In the 1970s, he worked as an apprentice in the fast food industry, operating his father's roadhouse restaurant, the Dairy Den, in Ridgeway, South Africa. He refers to it as Hell's Apprenticeship. His father bought him an aircraft ticket to the United States in 1972 on the condition that he visit his aunt in Greece on the way back. George's dream was sparked by the strip. It launched him on the path to becoming South Africa's number one quick service restaurant chain and the world's largest fried chicken franchise outside of the United States of America. I went on the trip to America with mad enthusiasm, says Sabonis. I would buy trade journals to learn about the restaurant business taste 12 hamburgers and 20 pieces of chicken every day until one day in Texas I tasted the best chicken ever. I invited the owner of the chicken outlet out for dinner that evening and asked him for the recipe. It took a lot of convincing but the next morning he agreed to sell it to me for five thousand dollars. I didn't have that kind of money and eventually I paid him my last one thousand dollars in travelers checks for something I hadn't even tested. It was a huge leap of faith. He could have sold me salt and pepper mix. Some bonus combined the spice blend under his bed at home and switched it for his father's roadhouse existing chicken coating recipe. Over a 40-year period, sales climbed and monthly turnover increased from 25,000 rand to 200,000 rand. Your chicken tastes amazing. What have you done to it? My uncle asked my father one day. That little son of a... must have done something. I will kill him, his father said. Well, uh, Robertson Spices received the winning formula and has been combining it in large quantities for chicken licking ever since. After his father was crippled by a heart attack, George took over the dairy den at the age of 23. KFC built its first location in South Africa about the same time in 1972. Some bonos began serving black people in their cars in 1975, despite the fact that this was against apartheid legislation. I felt like it was restoring their dignity, he claimed. Leave him. You just count the money, his grandfather answered when his father questioned it. George gained his allegiance of the millions of clients who helped him become who he is today as a result of his actions. Winnie Mandela and Tokyo Sexuele were both regulars at our eatery. So expanding our business to black communities was an obvious approach at the time, says some bonus. The theory then was making 200,000 rand per month in 1978, which was a lot of money at the time. I requested 5% of the proceeds from my father. You and I, we don't share, some bonus father replied. I will summon your cousin from Bloemfontein to take your place. George, who was now married and had a daughter, had no intention of entrusting his future business to his cousin. As a result, he continued to work 
for a pittance. George negotiated and surrendered the lease in his own name in 1980, when his father was in Greece. For three months, his father didn't speak to him, but he had gained his respect. They reconciliated three months before his death the following year. Sombonos founded Golden Fried Chicken in January 1991, which was to be the new name until a waitress came up with a better one, Chicken Licken, which cost only 300 rand to register. It's a logo that's now worth millions of dollars. Hi guys, the video just to pop in really quickly just to endorse a high quality product that I use in my daily life called ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a must if you want to surf online completely anonymous and gives you that peace of mind and is very fast, reliable and secure. Besides that, you can also access to public Wi-Fi's with no problems because nobody will have access to your information. The another thing that I love about it is the fact that you can stream videos and movies online with no pop-ups, no delays and no buffering anywhere in the world, which is quite amazing. The another thing is, while research, you don't have to give your information to internet service providers. So many advantages for such a low price. Don't forget to check the link below, guys. Cheers. When we grew to five stores in 1982, KFC brought us to court because our name was too near to its motto, finger licking. Good, Sambona said. It would cost 10,000 rand to battle to maintain the name, according to the trademark lawyers. I borrowed the money from my mother, worked my shift and traveled to Pretoria with 10,000 rand in a chicken Lincoln packet in my car. The bosses had left for the day, so the receptionist was alone. I informed her I had 10 pieces of chicken for them and left. And easy about giving her with the money. I called the next morning to see if they had received the funds. He smiles as he says they started rushing about like headless chickens. The unfortunate girl had trusted me and deposited the money in the refrigerator. I won the case and the judge admitted that he hadn't read the Chicken Link nursery book in a long time. From that time on, the highway was open for expansion. Sombonos gave away the first franchises which were in Soweto and Alexandra in a desperate attempt to expand further. In 1985, he began selling franchises for 3,000 Rand, but aided each franchise in getting started by providing 15,000 Rand in equipment and stock, as well as the royalties for the first four months were not paid. As a result, I didn't make a lot of money, he admits, but we were expanding rapidly at the time, and we had 21 outlets by then. Since then, Chicken Lincoln has expanded to 250 locations, 10 of them are privately held, with six of the 250 being the most successful. It sells 100,000 birds every week and was the first fast food restaurant to provide hot wings, which it sells in the millions every month. Chicken Licken has now grown to be a quarter of the size of KFC, the global fried chicken behemoth. Sambonos claims that whenever he opens a new store near his rival, he is treated like a sitting duck. Or in this case, a flock of chickens. Because roughly 30% of their market switches to chicken licking. When the two brands are placed next to each other, you can demonstrate loyalty, he explains. Sambonos sees the drive throughs or fly throughs as the future of the fast food industry and claims to have been the first to implement the concept in South Africa at the Dairy Den in 1976, after seeing it at Wendy's in the United States. In the last 20 years, the country's demography has changed, Sabono says. People 
who used to reside in the townships are now relocating to more wealthy places. To keep the patronage of this new middle class, we had to relocate our stores to the suburbs with them. It's been a struggle, but we are making progress, with stores now open in many of the country's upscale shopping malls. Every year, a 50 million marketing budget is set aside for brand positioning. The menu is revised every year in May. With the help of culinary consultants in the United States, our cuisine is the same caliber as any of our foreign competitors, Sambono explains. Rain. Rain is an important part of George's existence. During the May's growing season, he always prays for rain, because the price of maize ultimately determines the price of chickens. He is also concerned about running out of chicken, he says. I sell chicken, sorry. Chicken Lincoln obtains his chickens from Rainbow Chicken Limited, a JSE listed company, which is South Africa's largest producer of chickens. It has imported chickens from Brazil in the past also, when Rainbow was unable to meet the demand. So, despite the fact that we are in a recession, what makes this man so successful? His humble response is to be able to read the market, to be persistent and to never give up on your dream. He does, however, have another ace up his sleeve in the form of training. Chicken Lincoln employees do not leave the same way they arrived. They improve their abilities. Sambonos claims that they have established a profit-sharing culture. This means on target bonuses for everyone from the ship fryers to the supervisors who are daily heard asking how much of the daily takings have we made today? When asked when he plans to retire, he said he doesn't know. I am not going to retire, he jokes, because this industry and I are like death and taxes. George Sambon is the true Rex to riches story, but despite his fortune, humility remains his most defining personality trait. He was recently granted a 12 rand tip by a diner who felt sorry for him while wiping tables to help out in his restaurant and he was wearing an Armani jacket. If only the patron had known who George was. When asked what his mantra was, he answered, it is Martin Luther King's quote, if you haven't discovered something worth dying for, it isn't worth living. So George Sambono's childhood wish was basically came true. And no one is laughing at him now. Finally, George Sambonas unfortunately died in 2016 in Johannesburg at the age of 67, leaving a great legacy behind him. I hope you guys like the video, share, subscribe and like. And I will see you in the next Living in SATV video.